Good evening. Welcome to the Council Rules and Policy Committee meeting, 6 o'clock July, uh, June 19th. Uh, present, we have Judy Roy, Ed Blaze, and Jim Benedict. Um, welcome. We'll go over a few things. Uh, a discussionary passion. Um, I think one of the first things on our list will be the policy regarding roadside memorials. Um, Chief Bolton is in attendance with us. He has taken a good amount of time to look over and I will go over what his suggestions are. That's all right. Welcome, Tom Hall. Yeah. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, no problem. I lost track of time. I was being productive in my office, I assure you. Okay, double double duty, huh? <laughs> Over the past couple of weeks, got a lot of a lot of thought to roadside memorials. Um, I have also met with three families who either live in our community or have lost loved ones in fatal accidents in our community or in the case of the Delano family, both. I explained the issue to all three families and made them aware that I'm putting together a suggestion for the town council to review. After discussing their needs as a family members, I have been able to put together a suggestion that was acceptable to these families. Currently, public work Works keeps a stock of four by four by three feet granite posts that I use to delineate certain rights of way and other markings. The posts are currently $27 per post. I have also priced out a weatherproof four by four weatherproof plaque that could be epoxied to the granite posts and could have one to four lines of text engraved on it. Cost of the plaque is $22.75 upwards of $40.95, depending on the lines of the text. After talking to Mike Shaw, my thought would be for the sake of consistency, we could prove the post and plaque, provide the post and plaque, excuse me, and Mike's crew would do the install. Mike said that this is about a 20-minute deal for his people. By doing this, we can ensure not only the consistency, but we would also know that it's properly installed and in a place <coughs> Excuse me. They would either have property owner's permission or was in an appropriate place on the edge of the private right away. I realize this is an additional expense to the town, but given that we do not have that money of these situations, I feel that the good may be beneficial in getting families' cooperation in terms of meeting our goal of limiting the distraction that these could have. The families would like to have the ability to attach small emblems to the remaining sides or top of the marker as they wished. I included that in a policy as given the small amount of space, it would seem that it would not cause an issue. They were talking about potentially having a small cross or other things like that attached. The families also spoke of the ability to put additional floral arrangements, et cetera, for special dates. They identify the close uh, as these person's birthday, possibly wedding anniversary, Christmas, Easter, and the anniversary of the event. I've included those in the policy in the event that the council should wish to endorse those. The language relative to this is in part taken from the Scarborough Memorial Cemetery Ordinance. Please advise if, if this might work that then you would like to do anything further with this prior to the Rules and Committee meeting on the 19th, uh, which I was planning on attending. This was given to Tom a week or so ago, so he's gone through it, and there is a policy, as I found out, underneath it, which I didn't know. My apologies for that. <laughs> I wrote you back. I saw that. Thank you. <laughs> It is, uh, I don't see the need for the whole, well, it won't take too long. 
Maybe, maybe just Robbie could speak to it. Yeah. Well, yes, I'd like to give uh, Chief Moulton the opportunity, if you would, to address it. And if you'd like to go over the policy and or whatever thoughts you have, would it be appreciative? Just as the chief takes the podium, I'll just mention, please, chief. Um, certainly the chief put together the most of this policy. I added a couple of thoughts, really the second page of this policy, and certainly I can speak to that. I was trying to capture some of the prior comments and discussion this committee had. So okay. um, by all means, please. Well, I think you hit the uh, the important parts. Obviously, the background is that, you know, it's become more and more common for family and friends to uh, to identify specific areas where a loved one may have lost their life in a motor vehicle accident. And um, previously, without any policy, it's uh, it's been uh, all over the board in terms of the nature and size of these uh, types of memorials. And um, obviously, there was a concern about, um, in some cases, maybe even providing a distraction that could create another accident or problem. So uh, that's the background for the for the work on it. Um, and uh, you know. Um, I thought it was important to to reach out to the families who've been in this situation to see if uh, you know that we could uh, at least understand from their perspective uh, what might be important pieces of this to them. So um, I, I did, uh, as expressed in the memo to uh, <coughs> manager, I did meet with three different families and talked about their needs and so forth, and and those are addressed in the uh, not only here in the policy, but as you mentioned in the in the email. And um, I think what was important for people, there was a couple of things that was important for people. Number one is for some of the folks it was important to uh, to have some um, way of identifying a, a specific site and, um, and uh, along with some notation as to uh, who the person was and so forth. And um, so looking at these markers uh, that the town already uses, that Public Works already uses to delineate some of those public ways and so forth. It, um, it was suggested, uh, you know, possibly putting one of those in the ground with maybe the ability to, to put some type of a marking on it. And um, so that's what we explored, and I talked with, uh, with Mike Shaw, and, uh, and he was agreeable to, to uh, locating and, and putting the things in place. And he also stocks those posts, and um, you know, obviously, the financial piece of it would be up to what you folks decide how how you would deal with that. But it's not a lot of money. It's uh, like I said, the post was twenty-seven dollars, I think, and then I priced out what it would cost to have that little four by four plaque put on it. And the other the other thing that the families wanted, like it, like I mentioned in the email, was that they thought it was important on certain events to have the ability to place other things at the site. One of the things that uh, one of the other things that I thought was important for consistency's sake, and um, if in doing this was to have public works involvement, because sometimes these things end up on private property, and um, and admittedly some of them don't have the actual property owner's permission to have what's there, and I think some of the property owners maybe have allowed that to happen and haven't said anything, but at the same time. It would, uh, I think, it would be beneficial for us to be involved somehow and, and to meet with property owners to make sure that there isn't an issue if, if something is put there. And if there is, um, then we could uh, pick the the closest place that's actually in the public right of way, at the edge of the public right of way, or something. So that's pretty much the the highlights. I'd be happy to answer any questions or anything that you might have about it. I think the other important highlight is that certainly that it gives the town, the policy gives the town some rights to remove things if they're um, dangerous, detrimental, or diseased, or unsightly, or when they don't conform. Yeah, that, so that language pretty much uh, came out of the, the uh, Memorial Cemetery Ordinance, and, uh, and it's worked quite well there, and, um, and so the thought was that it, we felt comfortable that it would work in this situation as well. And, and I think, you know, the, in, in a lot of respects, this is very helpful to the family too, because, um, in, because there is no policy or guidance or anything, the family really has nothing to stand on with some of the friends and, and other folks who want to do things, and um, and this kind of gives them the ability to to say, 
you know, let's let's work within these guidelines and try to keep this to a to to something appropriate. I think the other thing that's important is it just shows sort of reverence on the town side in allowing uh, families to do what they need to do. Um, I don't think we have any questions on that. I want to thank you very much for doing the work. I, I just I think, have uh, Ed. I do have a comment. First of all, I think you did an outstanding job in in creating this. It's really, really good. Um, and also the uh, the second page there, the other memorials, is yeah. is an extremely good idea. My one concern is that putting up a post is like after the fact. Uh, when an accident happens, stuff is found in the accident scene like the next day, and we're not really addressing. I mean, we're addressing the, once the grieving process has been taken care of, I mean, you're not going to go over and visit the family the next day and talk right. about putting up a four by four by mm -hmm. three foot post. So how do we handle the time from the accident until we get this up and going? Good, I mean, good point. That's, that's a, that's a very good point. Yeah. That's a very good point, and, and I'm and I'm not sure the answer to that. Honestly, um, I don't know that they're in those initial days. I, I don't know that there is much that we are going to do to stop people from. I mean, it's just a natural thing, particularly you know in, in cases where the the younger people. I mean, there's just a a natural tendency for them to want to. Go put things there. I guess maybe the best thing for us to do is to to approve the ordinance and uh, see what happens. Yeah, the, I, yeah, because after after an accident, there are times that a crime scene or an accident scene has got to do their work, oh, yeah. and. Uh, not to bring up the gentleman down here, but it took him quite a while before it was established that that uh, Mr. Tolemo was not at fault, mm -hmm. that the oil truck, in fact, was. So I'm, I'm, I'd be willing to bet that, that no one wants anything added to a site before anything to do with the law is. So I, I, mm -hmm. I tend to agree with you, but so I'm going to play it by ear in the beginning and see where's the bugs. Yeah. I think the difference, you're right, I think uh, every situation is going to be different. It could be weeks, it could be months, weather may not cooperate, it may be an extended period before we can g mm -hmm. get in and do this. Um, the, the value of having this policy is when that conversation is had, we have something to point to. It's time right. to transition to okay. something more permanent. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful policy, it really is. All right. Excellent. Um, Do I hear a vote? Uh, Judy. Could I just ask, um, just, I just, Verbiage wise, just to kind of maybe address what Ed just because that's a really good point. Just he just said something like, um, uh, It is understandable that immediately following the accident, items may be placed at the site, and within a reasonable amount of time, a permanent granite post will be placed. That's fair to recognize that there will be some transition period, that it's yeah. not immediate. Yeah. It, in most cases, and I, and I agree that certainly we wouldn't. Um, you know, be going right out to to discuss this with the family right off the bat. But at the same time, um, we we generally have uh, you know some involvement fairly quickly mm -hmm. with families in these situations, whether it's uh, you know to to do notifications or or if it's a family from town. Um, you know, we, we're pretty generally yeah. dealing with those folks uh, fairly fairly quickly. Yeah, um, and we could. Certainly, have uh, you know at least open the door for a discussion. Yeah. Or, or you, fairly could, you could say perhaps within a reasonable amount of time after discussion discussion with family members. I mean, what's a reasonable amount of time? It could be anywhere from 30 to 90 days, or you know. And probably isn't worth defining because things are. Yeah, it, right. have to be a bit it, it varies from in, you know from. Uh, in we can add that language in the background, the first paragraph, just yeah. a, a, an extra sentence yeah, just that recognizes, acknowledges there's a transition period. Yeah. That immediately, it is understandable that immediately following the accident, items may be placed to the site, and within a reasonable amount of time, the permanent granite post will be placed. 
then within a reasonable amount of time. I like your language. If you're, if I can read your writing or if you're willing to share it, we'll include it. What's that? A motion? So is this in the form of amendment? Amendment, amendment, motion. I'll second that. Okay. I'm not moved. Other discussion on it? So now that's been amended, uh, so as amended, right? Amended as amended, right. So now we're going to go back to the... So do you want to take a vote uh, as amended? We just need a vote once as done? amended on the... Okay. All opposed. Good. Just to, if I could just add uh, uh, the, the items that the manager uh, added at the end, and again, I think that's a great point, and we would be certainly happy to have those kind of conversations as well um, when we talk about about this situation, that there are other, other means, too, that might be meaningful. Right. So, so yeah. that, that was a vote on the amendment, and then we just need a vote as, on the main motion as amended. I thought we just, so we just did. Was that I recorded it unanimous. Okay. Okay. We read your mind. You we did it all in one step. Oh, you did it. You did <laughs> it. I read your mind. <laughs> so we'll make that change, and I would expect it on the next council meeting in, in uh, July. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Certainly. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> okay. We'll go back. And next, we have ad hoc committees and time. length of time for committees. This is a pretty general and open, purposeful uh, discussion. We have a couple of things going on. Uh, that I think we need to see attention brought to. Um, but let's first deal with the ad hoc committees and length of time for committees. Judy, could you give a little background as to how that works? I could try. Well, basically, I mean, it, it's usually spelled out in, in, the, in the item that establishes the committee, whether they would, uh, the ad hoc committee, uh, is given a certain amount of time. It might be a three-month period. It might be a year period uh, that they do, do the work, and then a report is expected to the council for for action on their recommendations. So it, I think it depends. It, it always has depended upon what the what the ad hoc committee's work process is, what it what it relates to. Some things take longer than other others. For example, the Energy Committee was an ad hoc committee, and we had a year to come up with recommendations for the Council relative to uh, establishing a permanent en Energy Committee and establishing the, 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 uh, the work of the Energy Committee. So that committee was given a year. Um, others might be, I mean, even uh, as I go to GP COG, there was a an ad hoc committee established to, uh, for policies relative to uh, trans transportation, and they were given three months to come up with uh, a list of priorities uh, for you know for the uh, GPCOG to work on as relative mm -hmm. to you know relative to uh, um, the transportation issue. So it's all you know generally been relative to the work of the committee and. Yeah, but the, usually they are time limited. The uh, perhaps just stepping a bit further back, the little framework behind this is your administrative code, actually your rules and policies uh, ordinance specifies standing council um, committees, and this being one of them, the other two being finance appointments and ordinance. I'm sorry, there's four standing um, council committees. You further define other boards and committees, and those are broken into two categories. Special committees or boards, and I'll read you your definition. These are boards or committees created by the town council and for which serve a special purpose for an indefinite period of time, and those boards and committees are required by state statute. For example, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, Shellfish Conservation Commission, state statute requires that we have one. Uh, those those um, groups, so they do not sunset. 
they are uh, appointed by council and they exist uh, forever. And then the final category are ad hoc committees. And your definition of that um, are boards or committees that are appointed by the council for, for a specific purpose and or specified duration. And I think that's um, the, the final phrase there is probably what's got your attention. In certain cases, there is a specified duration. In others, there's not. And so these committees continue to operate. And I, I think you've touched on something that we've not been consistent. Um, your last committee, you might recall, I think all three of you approved it, was the Historic Preservation Committee. <coughs> that had a very specified one-year sunset, uh, a charge and then a one-year sunset. Uh, and that's not always been the case. And, and perhaps it's those that have a specific charge but no definite time. Since we, as a council, uh, for those committees, we have the right to go back and absolutely everything that's going on. The, absolutely, the Oak Hill, um, the Oak Hill um, sidewalk uh, committee was that. Did that have a a time limit? I was just looking at that. That's some of the material Tody put together and sent you. It's I think available on your on the SharePoint site. Um, the Oak Hill pedestrian study was specific to that and it timed out when the study was complete. Yeah. The more recent transportation committee, I don't believe, has a duration associated. Okay. I think that's because nobody knew how yeah. long it would take. Yeah, no, right. it doesn't because as I read it, it doesn't, it doesn't have. Right. Yeah. So we've been somewhat inconsistent. Um, I think as was mentioned last meeting prior to both uh, Councilor Benedict and Councilor Blaze's time on council, the last Rules and Policies Committee uh, did really cleaned house. Uh, we got rid of five or six committees that were just kind of languishing, not doing much, and they actually were disbanded entirely. And uh, so I think we've made great progress in kind of cleaning that up, frankly. Uh, there's probably a few stragglers that, that remain. And these are the newer ones we've created, you know, whether it's the, I, I think the last Four, in my recollection, are the Oak Hill, well, excuse me, the Transportation Committee, the Pest Management Advisory Committee, the Historic Preservation Committee. Those are the ones that have been created in the last 18 months or so. Do we? I mean, is your intent, Jim, to uh, be con being consistent with it? I.e., the definition of ad hoc committee says a specific purpose and/or specific duration. Do we want to change that language to say that it's a specific purpose and a specific duration? I, I would rather than and or. That. I think uh, by doing so, in one, a few uh, short word changes, you would affect uh, global change as opposed to reaching into yeah. every one of these enabling resolutions or orders and changing it. And I, I personally think that the town council should review them on an annual basis. So you could add you could add that to the the policy and they and that and their and well, each, the way, each shall be reviewed annually for um, the way the council chose to deal with that issue in the past is require an annual report of some sort from the committees and I think the notion was that would be an opportunity for councillors who may not be at the meetings or looking at their minutes to at least appreciate what they're doing and perhaps yeah. though it wasn't stated yeah. as much yeah, evaluate whether they're still meaningful and worthwhile. Yeah, because the annual report is required because when we did revamp it, we did make it mandatory that all committees provide an annual report to the council so that, you know, we may just want to put, again, global language in there to say and each, you know, each, you know, each ad hoc committee shall be reviewed um, uh, annually and or as necessary. Mm -hmm. I will say the only anomaly that I'm aware of is the Pest Management Advisory Committee and I say that because it's a committee created uh, within a policy that does other things. The, the pest uh, management policy itself has a provision that creates this advisory committee. So uh, there are other factors at play with regard to that as opposed to the other ones are typically uh, an action of council um, in and of themselves. Mm. Uh, this is just different that it's a component of a larger policy. Mm. I guess as I think back, uh, voting on the pest management policy, uh, I actually didn't vote on it on September 21st. 
um, but I was thinking about it. Um, but um, I was really kind of looking at, at again as a as being an ad hoc committee that had a time limit. Um, I, you know, I, I, I really probably would have broached that had I been there for that vote to say, you know, is this going to go on indefinitely or are we going to put a time limit on this advisory, ad hoc advisory committee? I don't know as it was named an ad hoc in the, in the policy. It was no. not. It was an advisory committee. It did not say ad hoc advisory committee. And it touches on areas of education and, you know, uh, longer range efforts, if you will, um, as one of their tasks. Oh, I'm glad that you brought up the, the, the best management. Um, that vote was taken before I was on the committee, uh, but I was around for the other chaos of last fall. Um, bygones be bygones, we have to look ahead, not behind. But if we take a look at the, <coughs> excuse me, the fields, starting with Wiley, number one and number two, the community where the pond is, and you go on to other ones, I don't think, and I don't want to cast a finger because I'm not sure where it belongs, I don't think that we got a bang for our buck out of what they did. They didn't stay within budget. They went way over the top. And it, it's just not up to par. It's not up to, not up to snuff. They had one field that you know of. Um, instead of treating it, uh, they dug it up and put in new when in, that's not what the majority of people would have done. And I'd just like to, to, to bring it up here. Uh, I guess if we could adjust that part of the um, pest management, um, what they need to do with qualifications or whatever, and I know that they they have a, a three-year contract, but in any other place, if uh, after the first year there hasn't been anywhere close to satisfaction, the contract is terminated. I think I just want to be clear. When you say they, are you referring to the advisory committee or the contractor? It seems the contractor. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know how much the contractor <coughs> was acting under the pest management's authority or direction. The, the contract is administered through my office, so the contractor does not take direction from the Pest Management Committee. Though he attends those meetings, he, I do seek their advice as the policy really requires of me, uh, but from a contractual uh, point of view, I'm the one administering. They're not saying yes or no. Um, again, often I'll seek their advice um, as time will allow. And in particular, um, they've been, the only authority they have is, in, is when I'm asking for emergency exemptions under the policy. Uh, I must uh, seek their advice and opinion. Um, but beyond that, it's simply advisory capacity. They're not a, executing the contract. They're not directing the contractor to do this, that, or the other thing. Uh, we've chosen to use them and, and allow them to be part of the conversation as we're learning about the organic approach. And it seems to be a work in progress. In if, if we didn't have the Pest Management Advisory Committee, whose advice would you be seeking? Certainly staff. Uh, we've sent uh, members of our staff to, to get some basic organic training. Um, the committee by design, and if you if you look at the representation, we, we tried to populate it with folks, um, not all, but some folks that have some knowledge of the field. It requires certain credentials, uh, and in other cases, it, uh, it ensures that the school is represented um, on there as well. Well, there's some homework that's been done on organic, especially because of the dollar side that I don't think is 
very good the way it's been or what the results have been. I got a copy of the National Post, which is not Democratic, not Republican, not Independent. Basically, represents everybody and everybody. And they start off with dandelions, which is a big problem down in all of the parks. They become the dominant ground cover for lawns, parks, school yards, and sports fields. And I'll just read the beginning of this. Uh, I didn't think to get a fourth one uh, for you, Tom, but I will make one afterwards. Provincial politicians promise their province won't look the same once after they're done. Usually they talk of taxes, jobs, education, and laws of the land. While these are important issues, they frankly don't have much physical presence in everyday life. The streets generally look the same regardless of who's in power. Well, not so in Ontario, and I pull that because they got the same weather conditions, they're in the same uh, grade five for planting instructions, etc. Um, in the past year, the premier of the province altered the physical appearance. Every front yard is now ugly. It's been a year and a month since the government introduced legislation banning the use of pesticides except where golf courses and farms. As a result, weeds, primarily dandelions, have become the dominant ground cover for lawns, parks, schoolyards, and sports fields. It took a full, it took a while to win a full impact of the ban to become apparent. Um, last year, many lawns seemed to retain vegetal, vegetile protection against weeds due to previous purpose, uh, pesticide treatments because they, they do have an extended period of time that they work. Uh, residential streetscapes switch from yellow, from green to yellow, white and fluffy, and then back to yellow again. And we're getting the same thing here. And going through into the, 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 the price difference, it also covers in here that there are many um, non-organic products that can do the same thing, and they are of absolutely no ill will to children, other plants, vegetation, animals, etc. cetera. Um, the state of Maine, if anybody happened to look up, came out with a series of things that they recommended and they okayed. And uh, you go back to the dollar value, you've got a $35,000 difference between non excuse me, non organic and organic. And that is just apples to apples, nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts, no extras, everything else is an extra. And I, I, I think right there, 35 grand in this economy is a lot of money. Can, can and not only the money, but the job. Can I ask for clarification? Uh, we're talking rules and policies, and we're talking about whether or not we we want to limit advisory committees or change the committee makeup. Uh, you know, I'm having a hard time separating those things. I mean, I, what are, what are we trying to decide? I, I agree with your information on you know organic versus other. There's a lots of things that need to be discussed, but for rules and policies. What are we trying to do with this pest management policy? Uh, how are we trying? How are we suggesting that there be a change in ad advisory or ad hoc committees? Well, I, I brought that up basically because that is one of uh, the four committees that was just put in to effect. <coughs> And it has no time limit on it, but and I'm just I'm simply bringing up the fact that the job isn't being done mm -hmm. appropriately, okay. and instead of giving. But it's an advisory committee, not an ad hoc committee, and that's where my concern is. If it's an ad hoc committee, you can have a specified purpose and specified duration of time that they spend on it. 
but we don't have anything in our rules and policies on advisory committees, and maybe we need to do something with the definition of advisory. I agree with that, but I think I heard Tom say it was not specifically a committee or an ad hoc committee. Well, it isn't. It's, it's an advisory committee. It's advisory. And we have nothing in the rules and policies about advisory committees. We've just agreed to make a change for ad hoc committees. Okay. And do we need to... No, we didn't. No. We didn't. Oh, did... We were talking about. We didn't vote on. We were talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about the Yeah. All committees on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I, I, it says specified purpose and or specified duration. And if we incorporate that to cover all ad hoc committees, they make sure that they have a duration. But it would not include advisory. So at this point, we could we could make a new definition. We could say ad hoc slash advisory committees shall have a specific purpose and spe specified duration of action. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. It sounds to me, though, uh, the Councilor Benedict's concern had more to do with the substance in the, in the, uh, of the policy, yes. not necessarily. Yeah. Well, it uh, may affect, uh, have effect from the yeah. advisory committee as well. I don't. I, don't I just want to be clear, clear on what we're trying to decide here. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I agree that there's been some issues and concerns, and particularly as it relates to athletic fields. I mean, one instance particularly about athletic fields is that they, they like to keep them about an inch and a half in order to be good good athletic field. But to use organics, they recommend three inches, and, you know, to get the, the, the best benefit from organics. And so th there are some there are some discrepancies on where, you know, how much, how you use the organics on what kind of fields. You know, yeah. So, uh, and so I guess you know, what you're questioning is: is the advisory committee really giving the kind of advice that's cost-effective? Well, I guess I put the horse in front of the cart. I apologize for doing it in wrong order. However, we will put that uh, this on the back burner for a little bit. Uh, I think what we need to do is discuss as we started the ad hoc committees for length of time and the verbiage that you had that I thought that we had voted on. <coughs> Richard. Well, certainly. Um, what, what I he was here to speak about one, uh, was um, the um, committee with the transportation committee. Um, I think if you're going to put a time limit on the transportation committee, um, the council has to set forth a, a goals for us to reach. Okay, like in other words, um, study Oak Hill and you know pedestrian traffic, all that stuff, and then end the committee. If if the council doesn't do that, then I think it would be an on if it's tasked with ongoing, um, like we'll say, okay, we're going to, you know, just study the whole town of Scarborough. Well, that's going to take a lot of time. That's going to take several years, okay? And instead of what we're doing now, we're concentrating on Oak Hill. If that is a goal and that's the end of the goal, then the committee's dismissed after that. If we're going to, you know, continue on with other tasks in Scarborough, I think that, you um, Maybe uh, you should be setting a two-year or three-year term limit on that committee, just like any other committee, if it's going to be ongoing for <coughs> a long period of time. Um, but there definitely has to be some sort of time limit put on it. Um, and then you started discussing um, the um, pest management uh, committee. That, to me, that's tasked with a um, also tasked with an ongoing um, criteria of you know uh, administrating this organic program which is constantly changing um, the, the, the biggest thing here that uh, I think Jim brought up and it is a separate subject is that the organic committee um, or pest management committee has, if that's an issue, that is absolutely 
the issue for this committee because it's rules and policies. It's not uh, an ordinance. It's town rules and policies, and it belongs with this committee, and it always should have been. So, um, but like I said, that's how you definitely, you know, definitely decide on the committees is uh, have they got a t an ending task, and if they do, then um, you, you know, once that task is achieved, then you end the committee. If it's an ongoing one, then I think there should be uh, term limits, or you dis or the council decides when to end that committee. Mm -hmm. If it's not a standing committee, which I would say, like conservation commission and s such as that, is a, it would be a, like a standing committee. Mm -hmm. um, one, one question I have is: Do you? I think that it would be understood by the councilors. Maybe I'm wrong that something, especially the Transportation Committee, that should be still under the one-year term, but the availability of being continued. <laughs> I think the yearly mark <coughs> is, is more of a book stop for the council to make sure that they are on top of what's going on. Absolutely not, correct. Not necessarily to terminate the committee uh, right. or for the committee to feel it's going to be terminated, right. uh, it, you know, not for misuse possibilities. In my estimation, it would only be so if regarding it's going to take a long time, and I understand mm -hmm. that if you're in the middle of doing something come the end of the year, you can stand up and say, yeah, we, we're going to stay together because... It's just, uh, to me, I look at it as an avenue for us to stay up to par with what's been going on, whether it's been in nothing, and if it's nothing, why is it nothing? And not just transportation, but any committee in general. Absolutely correct. Any, um, any committee that isn't a standing committee, in my, you know, should be reviewed every year, like um, Council of Blaze said, um, should go under review. Um, let me like an example. Say, for example, next year we're saying um, we we're out of we can't spend any more money. We have no more. You know, we're not spending any more money on projects. Then I would say you dismiss the transportation committee for temporarily because you know we don't want you wasting your time. Because the whole idea of the transportation committee is we've had. Um, <coughs> Uh, committee after committee after committee that's made suggestions on what we should do, uh, around, what we need to do around Scarborough to make, you know, the transportation easier and more accessible. But none of those committees have ever gotten anything done. So this transportation committee was charged with getting some stuff done and getting, uh, and getting monies appropriated to, uh, to fund these uh, projects that have been on the back burner. So like I said, if we decide as a council next year that we don't have the funds and we're not going to allocate the funds and we shouldn't be wasting the transportation committee's time and dismiss them and then when things get better, we'll, you know, have started up again. And that would be the same thing with any uh, non-standing committee. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But, um, if there's no more questions, that's my two cents. <laughs> no, it, 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 it makes sense. I just didn't, I didn't want it to get too rule-oriented right. that taxpayers don't understand what is written or right. why it's written. Right. And directly what it you know, what it means. Mm -hmm. We can all look at a scene and you can look at it different than I look at it. Absolutely. Yeah. And and unfortunately when when you've got fourteen thousand people reading something, obviously we're never gonna have fourteen thousand but mm -hmm. it's still gonna be created for them. Right. Uh, I, yeah, like you were saying, I think Judy is saying it's uh, two different subjects, and yeah. that may be a subject for next meeting. Or, um, 
Well, but tonight just like, it's simply discussion. Yeah. And right. If we make movement, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. A another suggestion, again, if we go back to rules and policies, if you said something, just this is just off the top of my head, that ad hoc slash advisory committees shall be given a specific purpose and duration of time for meetings, which is appropriate to the tasks at hand and the goals identified. Which, which uh, it makes oh. perfect sense. It, it just strikes me that uh, to do so, as Councillor Sullivan suggests, you really will need to reach back into these and yeah. make a very clearer charge. Uh, I think yeah. by design, the Transportation Committee, for instance, though it was prioritized to look at Oak Hill first, it was given a very long charge mm -hmm. and yeah. big charge yeah. in terms of preparing a town-wide study, then recommending and implementing solutions. Yeah. Uh, that could be decades, yeah. frankly. To but, I mean, but you uh, could go back, if you had this in the rules and the policies, you could go back and say, okay, we started it here. How long do we really feel that it's going to take, uh, you know, and be specific about it? Again, the approach that we've tried to take, and maybe it's backfired, is to require annual reports, and that would be an opportunity to kind of a, just a gut check. Okay, are they doing productive work? Does it still make sense to have them exist? Maybe what we should do is adopt a, a policy, if you will, for this committee, this whoever committee to population, review all to review all committees on an annual basis and make recommendations to the council in that regard. Mm -hmm. That's not something that we've done consistently. Yeah, and that's Things just roll on year to year. And uh, that's Ed's, Ed's suggestion. I think he's right. I mean, we've got to just make a habit of it to do it annually. Yeah. I do. I don't think that this committee is the place where a review of what's going on in the other committees, I think it should be done at the council level. I think, you know, if the transportation committee comes forward to the council once a year, let's say in February, and makes a presentation as to what they're working on, what they accomplished, and so on and so forth, we discuss it then. And we make a recommendation to you continue, or you don't continue, or well, whatever. The, the purpose of citing it here <coughs> is to bring it to the council. Well, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. I agree with you. I agree okay. with you. But r really, all I'm saying is I, I think what we have to do is we just make a statement or you know, a policy or whatever that says all standing committees and they have committees. It is in the reviewed on an annual basis. It is already in the rules that they are they're supposed to be. In terms of annual reports? The, the annual reports at least. What what isn't well, what annual report is different than yeah. an annual review. What isn't and what you could do, because after all, all the council rules and policies are self imposed policies. These are things that the council has decided to do impose upon itself. So in a, in an effort to codify it, because you three agree that this is a priority, but the next three might not. Mm -hmm. uh, so the way to, to memorialize it is to codify it, impose it on future councils to say that the council shall review policies once a year. And perhaps we do it in a workshop in February, that we sit down and say, Good idea. Um, you may not want to get specific as to what month of the year because things happen, but right. just to put somewhere in your own rules that the council will, will review policies every year. I mean, that would be a fairly simple um, amendment and I can offer that, prepare that and have it ready for you at the next meeting. I think that sounds good to me. And then if you wish to d dive into the substance of, of one or more of these existing policy, excuse me, uh, committees and discuss the merits of that approach, um, that's certainly appropriate too. That's a, a different conversation it seems to me. And just a final point, I think Councillor Sullivan's uh, exactly right. Just with the pest management policy, that began and continued with the ordinance committee uh, because up until the final hours, it was proposed to be an ordinance. In the uh, final analysis, it was converted to a policy only. Um, so I think if it's to come back up, this would be the rightful place for it to be discussed. Mm -hmm. At this committee? Yes, because it's a policy. Um, I just wanted to clarify for Perhaps your benefit, the reason the ordinance took it up last time is that up until the, almost the final vote, it was to be an ordinance. And uh, that was one of the concessions, if you will, in the final analysis to convert it to a policy instead. Well, uh, I'll leave agreement to have Tom 
Thank you. Welcome to Burbage. Thank you, Todd. And Please bring do it that. to the next meeting. Please. Yep. Very good. All right. I don't think we need a vote. I'll just do that for you. Now, now let me let me just ask a question after the sure. last comment about this being a policy versus an ordinance. Should we review at our next meeting the organics and how it's going? No, we really don't have the time now to get through it all. Oh no, not now. No. And at our next meeting. I think that would be appropriate. Judy? Yes, sure. Huh? Yep. There are interested parties. Uh, I, I would expect the advisory committee would like to be part of that conversation and perhaps others. So just. I would expect that there would be a lot of people that I, would be interested, yes. I'm just, yeah, I offer that up having lived through, gone through the past conversation. There are a lot of folks that will be interested in the conversation. So um, if you choose to add it to your agenda. Um, Start early. No. <laughs> well, well yeah. there'll be a Play robust discussion, I, I would expect. But um, it, it's certainly up to you as to how you govern that process and who you involve in that process. But I think there'll be folks interested in the conversation. How do you think they should be approached to be known? Well, I would feel somewhat uh, responsible to make at least the advisory committee aware of it. Um, it's up to you as to whether you wish to have them part of the conversation, you know, to participate in the conversation. That's really up to the chair and you as a body. Well, although the advisory commission could be involved, is that I don't want to turn it into a free-for-all turn it into any type of a repeat of last November, I believe it was, when one of the councillors was not treated correctly. And I, I, again, I don't have to regurgitate it. We all know what took place. But I don't want that to happen. So I, I, I think for the initial stages, I don't want it to be, I mean, it's obviously an open meeting. Whoever wants to be at it can be at it. Uh, as far as publicized itinerary, I don't know if it needs to be made any more public or any more, uh, further broadcast. And I will uh, approach my partners here and see what they think. Uh, fortunately, Ed, you went around for what took place last November. Um, Judy, what, did, what do you well, think? Well, it's public. It's it's public information, and you know, I I think we just go about it the same way we do, we post the meeting, we post the agenda as as we normally do. That's, that's it. Don't okay. fanfare. I guess I didn't ask my question quite right. I want to be helpful to you um, yes. in terms of providing you with uh, accurate information in terms of absolutely experience and those sorts of things. Um, I think part of that conversation um, will likely need to include at least some members of the advisory committee. They've been with through this and have an opinion about it. Certainly myself and staff can give you our perspective as well. Can, can I make a suggestion that we discuss this offline exactly how we want to approach it? We visit it at our next meeting and then decide at our next meeting. So we'll keep put it on as a discussion for next day. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, yeah, I think we should do it the way. I agree with Judy the way she said that. But, um, I don't know if we need to force feed anyone to come to it. Oh, I don't think you'll have to force feed. I think people will be all too interested to come yeah, in. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That's the word. Right. Open the divide. That's not my concern. That you I'm going on vacation. The three of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. All right. Motion we will to adjourn. Take this up at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, speaking of that, do you want to schedule that next meeting? Uh, certainly. Let me get to my... Because we're not really on yet. Oh, of course. Thank you. <laughs>
I'm not sure if uh, the practice of the last couple of months of meeting an hour before before your regular council meeting would work given the subject matter. So wow. beyond that, the council only meets once in July and August. Is it the the, the third? The 17th of July. Third, it's the third uh, yeah. Wednesday. Correct. That's the 17th of July. That's that's council night. Yes. Why don't we do it uh, appropriate? All right. Well, at our next meeting, what we're going to do is discuss how we're going to approach it. So yes, I mean, is the timing for 6 o'clock on that okay. Wednesday? That seems to work. According. It'll work for you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then we will have it on the 17th. At 6. Okay, thank you. 6 o'clock. Very well. All right. Is there any further right. business to come, Judy? No. 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 Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. All in favor. Yeah.